Hello, my name is Daniel Yu, and I'm going to give a brief presentation on why sturm liouville theory is actually useful. Um, coming out of lecture, I was really confused on why what I had just seen was actually pertinent to what we were doing in class, so I'm just going to explicate that and then walk you through a few examples on how to put equations into sturm liouville form and use them. So, um, sturm liouville theory is a really beautiful theory that essentially is an extension of the spectral theorem um, from discretized vector spaces into um, continuous function spaces. And if you don't know what that means, that doesn't matter. Um, I'll explain that to you as I go. So um, our motivation for this problem is um, you should all know and love Fourier series by this point. And Fourier series, or the problem, a problem involving Fourier series goes as follows. Um, there's a simple eigenvalue problem that you guys have been dealing with, um, which is the second derivative of a function plus um, that same function times some constant equals zero with some set of boundary conditions. And as you know, um, the solutions are as follows. Um, if you simply plug in the ansatz of an exponential and then restrict the function to be a real function, not complex, then um, you get a linear combination of two possible solutions, the sine and the cosine, where um, the frequency of the oscillation is given by the square root of lambda, um, our eigenvalue from before, um, times in a some linear combination. And if you impose the boundary conditions that it needs to be zero on the edges, then you get uh, um, the eigenvalues are um, n pi over l squared, where n is some integer. Um, and then further imposing the boundary conditions, if you plug in zero, you can easily see that um, the coefficient of cosine in this case is zero, but that is not necessarily ne uh, needed in general for Fourier series. And then um, proceeding, uh, we also know that given that we can um, Given that we have an orthonormal basis of functions, we can project any function onto the space, and um, we know that we can project um, any function as the summation of um, the eigenfunctions on this interval 0 to L. Um, but up until this point, we haven't really known how they actually got those eigenfunctions. We just um, proved that they are an orthonormal basis on the interval from 0 to L, but we don't know how they got that. Um, but what sturm liouville does is it tells you when you have an orthonormal eigenbasis um, on a specific interval and what inner product you should use. So as you know um, from Math 21b, uh, if you have, if you want to write your function as a projection onto the basis of eigenfunctions, you need to write your coefficients as um, the inner product of the function with each element of the eigenbasis um, divided by a normalizing constant. And that's defined as the integral from 0 to L of the product of the functions. Um, and um, stir Mouville will generalize this idea. So um, without further ado, I'm going to head, go ahead and jump straight into uh, what is stir Mouville theory. So stir Mouville theory is stated as follows. Um, Given the conditions that we have some sort of p, w, q, and lambda, where p and w are positive real functions, q is a real function, lambda is a real number, um, then we can solve um, the following form of a differential equation. Um, just look at this for a second. Um, so any equation that we can put into a form similar to this has solutions with real eigenvalues, and any of the eigenvalues, the whole basis of eigenvalues, is an actually is actually an orthonormal basis for the interval from a to b. Um, note that the functions have to be defined on a to b um, with some boundary condition involving a linear combination of the function and its derivative at that point. So um, you can see I wrote that down here. Um, and let's see, did I miss anything? Um, OK, so any function that is projected onto this orthonormal eigenbasis of uh, on the interval from a to b, um, it's a Hilbert space. Any pr function that's projected onto it, given that you project it onto an infinite number of 
of the eigenfunctions, it will converge to the value of the function. So um, this is kind of cool. We know that works in Fourier series. We've seen it work before, um, but we're actually going to look at a couple examples that aren't Fourier series that are pretty famous, um, known as Legendre and Bessel functions. So um, I'm going to rewrite um, Fourier series here just to show you that it's in sturm louisville form. So if we go ahead and compare um, this sturm louisville form, we see that p of x has to be um, 1 here, and that would just give a second derivative from this term. q is 0, and w of x is 1. And given that, um, this is the exact form for sturm louisville form, and I'm going to pull up um, Legendre below, and Legendre is stated as follows um, this differential equation, and although it doesn't look exactly like this in the section below, I'm going to show you how to put it in sturm louisville form, but this is the statement of Legendre, um, the equation that Legendre functions come from, um, and then I will also show you um, the equation that Bessel functions come from right here here. So um, before I go into putting them into sturm louisville form, just talk a little bit about why they're important. So Legendre and Bessel functions are um, really important solutions because they come up naturally um, in problems such as um, when you're solving for um, the bound states of electrons in the hydrogen atom. You actually need both of these to um, effectively describe the orbit. And Without them, you'd be kind of sunk in the water because, um, especially for Bessel functions, they describe um, what are called spherical harmonics, or basically um, how uh, the probability function of an electron depends on um, its angle um, with respect to the proton. So if you didn't understand what that means, don't worry about it. But um, basically, just know that they're really useful for describing things in nature, um, and that such equations come up naturally. It's not something that they just pulled out of their hat and decided like, hey, this looks like fun, I can solve it. So um, now I'll just walk you through how to put something into sturm louisville form. So uh, you wanna put some a function into sturm louisville form so you can know what um, what the, the functions are, um, specifically p, x, and q. And the reason you wanna know um, these functions is um, the inner product, um, according to sturm louisville form is actually defined, if I pull up um, this thing from before, is we actually um, use the weighting function as part of the inner product. So um, when, you're, when you're writing the inner product of some function um, with respect to the eigenfunctions of um, of this differential equation, then you can actually you actually have to write the um, the inner product as an integral across the bounds of the weighting function multiplied by the function multiplied by the eigenfunction, and this differs from Fourier series, well it doesn't differ from Fourier series, but you can see from Fourier series from before that the eigenfunction is actually one, so we just ignore it in this inner product. But in reality, for other functions such as Legendre and Bessel functions, we're going to need to utilize um, this weighting function as we do, and I'm forgetting the normalizing constant here, but we're going to need some form of weighting function in our inner product. Okay, so going back to below, um, if we want to solve this equation, um, as you know very well, you can plug in the ansatz of uh, an exponential, and given that we have the same boundary conditions as before, that it needs to be constrained, you'll find that only the versions of lambda, when lambda produces um, an imaginary argument to the exponential, do you actually find solutions that exist? If lambda yields exponential solutions, then you'll never find a linear combination that will satisfy the boundary conditions. And so um, in the end, our solutions, our eigenfunctions, if you will, will be of the form uh, the exponential of some constant 
times x and then multiplied by a linear combination of sines and cosines, which I'll write here um, with some sort of coefficient to the, uh, the argument of the cosine. So um, I'm not going to solve explicitly what it is for this case, but you guys know how to do that. So um, k is some number that depends on n, and to make that explicit, I'll write that in here. Um, and so those are our eigenfunctions. It's, it'll be of this form. Oh, that's not working. And try this again. Okay. And if we want to find p, q, and w, what we simply do is we take this equation from before and we multiply it by sigma of x. Sigma of x is just some arbitrary function that we don't know, but what we're doing here is we're trying to massage our solution into some form that we can recognize. So all I've done in this statement is I've multiplied both sides by sigma of x, zero times sigma of x is still zero. And now we can clearly see that if we're supposed to satisfy Sturm-Liouville form um, from above, which I will pull up here, then we need to be able to put it in something that looks like this. And if we do out this derivative by simply doing chain rule, we can see that um, this becomes a second derivative um, by taking the derivative of the second argument. So it's p of x times y of x, and then plus the derivative of p of x times the derivative of y of x, the first derivative. So I didn't do anything fancy here. I just did chain rule on the first part here. But if you compare this to what we have above, you can see that clearly the sigma of x is just p of x here. And 2 sigma of x is just um, dp dx, um, if this is to satisfy sturm liouville form. And furthermore, you can see that q is 0 because there's no coefficient of y, but w of x is actually equal to sigma of x here. And then if we go ahead and solve the differential equation given by um, dp dx is equal to um, 2 sigma, then we'll see that um, it's pretty easy to find that sigma of x is equal to the exponential of 2x. And the reason why this is useful is now you have to remember, given, so we have our orthonormal eigenbasis of this Hilbert space, and we, whenever we're calculating an inner product, we now use to need, need to use this weighting function as part of our integral. And don't forget to do that, or otherwise you will um, be in for endless frustration. Um, and so we'll go ahead and make these small. Um, and so uh, I'll close out by just walking you through um, the, the Sturm-Liouville form for um, Legendre Fourier series and um, Bessel function. So as you know, I already did Fourier series. Um, the weighting function is 1 um, and p and q are nice. Um, well, q is 0, p is 1, and that makes it nice and easy. Um, for Legendre functions, as from before, um, if we simply um, solve for the eigen function, uh, eigen values, so they will be of this form, where nu is of some form of integer or half integer, and if you have anything else, there will not be solutions, and so that's why you can write it in this form. And um, if we simply uh, take a derivative of this, you can clearly see that that's negative 2x. So it's pretty easy to write um, this function into sturm liouville form and read off what the p, q, and w are here. Um, and for Bessel functions uh, right here, you can see that um, 
This is the form I gave you from before. And if you simply divide by x, then you um, get this x cancels and you get x minus nu squared over x. And now times, and then clearly the derivative of this is just 1, which is the coefficient you get here. So it's pretty easy to write this in Sturm Louisville form as follows and read off the p, q, and w. Um, and if you want to know the solutions, there's really no point in solving this equation. You'd waste a lot of time thinking about it because Bessel and Ajandra already did the thinking, so you can just look up what the solutions are and write them down. Um, and so that concludes my discussion of um, Sturm Louisville theory. I hope this helps you. Um, and if not, then definitely go to office hours. It's definitely a tricky thing to kind of wrap your head around, but once you get it, it's really beautiful theory. So uh, thanks for listening.